So in order to explain exactly how individual gas molecules behave, scientists came up with something called a kinetic molecular theory. And what this theory is, is it's basically a bunch of assumptions that they make about gases that helps us understand how individual gas molecules interact. So the kinetic theory is used to explain the behavior of gases on a nano scale level. Now in order to look at the macroscopic level or explain gas behavior on a macroscopic level, much larger level, we have to look at something else. Now scientists came up with different equations and formulas to explain macroscopic gas behavior. The first formula we're going to look at and discuss is called Boyle's Law. Now Boyle's Law works under certain conditions. Now if we have a constant temperature and constant number of moles or n, constant number of molecules, then we can use something called Boyle's Law. And what Boyle's Law relates is it relates volume and pressure. And what it states is that volume is directly proportional to the inverse of 1 over p, or said another way, volume is inversely proportional to 1 over p. And we can represent this as vp equals constant. In other words, if we rearrange this and multiply this by some constant, we get this formula. And what this basically says is that under these conditions of constant temperature and constant number of moles, V times P will always be a constant. So when V increases, P decreases. Or when P increases, V decreases. And so on. And our constant depends on the temperature and the number of moles. So if a temperature increases or if temperature changes or n changes, this constant will also change. In other words, the number that you get when you multiply V times uh, P will also change. Now suppose we have some gas of, or some sample of gas, and suppose we have one set of conditions and a second set of conditions. So suppose I have the following. Suppose I have some container with pressure 1 and volume 1, and I have the same container but with a smaller volume and a different pressure. So one set of conditions and second set of conditions. Now what this law does is it explains macroscopic phenomena like for example why is it that when I take a balloon filled with air and I push it hard enough it explodes. Well why does that occur? Well this can be explained by Boyle's law and I'll show you in a second. Well this equation can be rearranged in this format if we're dealing with two different sets of conditions. Notice that P times V will always give you a constant when you're talking about the same temperature and the same number of mole. So if I have one set of conditions, P1 times V1, that will give me a constant. And if I have the second set of conditions, P2 times V2, it will give me the same constant, right? So I can set them equal this guy is equal to the same constant that this number represents. So this is my equation for two sets of data or two sets of conditions. Now let's look at this picture. Well once again, why is it that a balloon explodes? Well when the balloon is, when you're not compressing the balloon, when you're just dangling it up, it has a certain pressure and a certain volume. When you take it in your hand and you begin squeezing it, you begin decreasing the volume. Boyle's Law states that if you decrease volume, pressure must increase because our constant remains the same. And that means pressure will begin to increase and the ball or the balloon will pop when the pressure is large enough for it to burst open and pop. And that's exactly why a balloon, when squeezed, will eventually pop. So let's look at this representation. Suppose that this is our balloon and this is our compressed balloon. Well, our gas molecule in this condition are further apart than they are in this condition. And that means if they're further apart here, they will make less collisions than here. And that means if there are less collisions, less of the molecules are colliding with the walls. And so if less collisions, that means we have less pressure. So the bigger the volume, the smaller the pressure. 
So once again, we see that we can use the kinetic theory to explain nanoscopic or nanoscale behavior of these molecules. And once again, the kinetic theory explains Boyle's law. A smaller volume means less room to navigate and increase in number of collisions. This increase in collisions will increase our pressure because by definition pressure is force per unit area. And if we have more molecules hitting the walls, we have more force and so a higher pressure. So this is Boyle's law. And Boyle's law is used to explain macroscopic behavior. So let's examine the graphs of Boyle's law or a graph of Boyle's law. Now we can have two graphs. We can graph volume and pressure or we can graph volume and one over pressure. So let's graph this guy first. So recall that I said that volume is inversely proportional to one over P. Now mathematically what that means is we have this type of a graph in which as we increase our volume our pressure decreases or if we decrease our volume decrease that volume in the balloon our pressure will begin to increase if we continue to increase or decrease the volume that pressure will begin to increase exponentially right and that's what this represents now instead suppose that I graph volume over 1 over P well how would that look well if I graph the volume over 1 over P whenever this guy increases this guy increases by the same ratio amount and that's because volume times pressure gives you a constant if, D, if this increases by say two times then this must decrease by two times that's why this guy is a straight line the slope is constant versus in, on this graph the slope varies it changes and if you wanted to find the slope you would have to use calculus and, to, and approximate it using lines tangent to any point on the line. Now this is Boyle's law. Once again, Boyle's law explains macroscopic behavior of gases versus the kinetic theory which explains nanoscale behavior of individual molecules.